Hello, welcome to Mod Midwives, a Metro Midwifery podcast. I'm Gina Gerba. And I'm Nedra Hale, and we are home birth midwives serving the Denver metro area. Today, we are bringing an interview to you. So we have Jay and Shauna Denton Guild Day. Did I say that right? I always want to say E at the end. Um, and they are um, a family who decided to switch to home birth. Um, because of the COVID-19 situation. And so, you know, we've seen, we've been talking about it nonstop. We've seen a lot of news stories. I was interviewed for the local Fox channel um, this week. Uh, There's just a lot of interest in this topic. And we thought it would be a lot more fun to have a couple come on and talk about their decision to yeah. change their birth plans. Oh, and baby Cora. I didn't say we have baby Cora with Yay. us today. Too. <laughs> She's like literally milk drunk. Yeah, she is. <laughs> um, so, so why don't you introduce yourselves and um, let us know a little bit about your family first. Hi, I'm Jay. Uh, this is Shauna. This Hi. is baby Cora. Uh, and Cora is our fourth child for our family, our third pregnancy uh, for each of us. We're um, blended. We're yeah. Blended. Like yours, mine, and ours, kind of, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've had three births. Yeah. yeah. So your third baby. Yeah. So just to tell us a little bit about um, when did you first, when did the idea first start kind of entering your consciousness about, oh, I might want to change my birth plan? Uh, four days before she was born. so you went through the process really fast really fast well I mean so I've had different births different birth experiences my first uh the induce it was 39 hours I had every drug known to man it was horrible and I could feel everything um so with my second I was like well I don't want any drugs because I want to like be able to move and know what it feels like because if it hurts it's okay baby if it hurts anyway then um you know might as well just go for it um and my second that's I actually think that's a really interesting point to make is that sometimes people are really surprised that you can't get pain relief doesn't offer no pain in yeah labor. yeah and well and I think I've heard different stories depending on who I talk to what medical professional I talk to um one medical medical professional said that you know that the epidural was probably just in a a bad spot and I needed to move to get um to get every area numb and then somebody else said that there's a very small percentage of women who actually uh the epidural doesn't work for Mm -hmm. I don't know but I just know it really hurt and Mm -hmm. it hurt for me then I've no drugs at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For the next two, yeah. So it's okay, baby. It's okay. It's, it's okay if I nurse you. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> this um, is a breastfeeding friendly show. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> um. So the so the third one, I had heard about a water birth, and so Jay and I talked a lot about, you know, having a water birth. So we were originally at what was that center that closed down we started at it was a mountain midwifery, mountain midwifery mm-hmm. that was... they made the decision to close after our first like four to six weeks there mm. um and then we transferred over to uc health because they had a water birth option mm-hmm. um out of their aurora campus and then with covid and everything as we actually got closer to her being due um uh, you know four days out um they were shutting down visitors. So there was a risk, at least other states have done it, Colorado, I don't know that they ever went there. There was a risk that, that per- partners wouldn't be allowed in the room. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think they ended up potentially shutting down their uh, water birthing right at the end while we, when we would have been due um, mm-hmm. because you, of the requirements to wear gloves and masks and things that just don't really work with water birth as easy. Right. And they um, stopped, they, there was, what was that gas that they were going to allow me to have? Oh, nitrous oxide. They were going to allow nitrous oxide and they'd stop their nitrous oxide service. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I'm surprised by that. I think it's a common source line for the whole hospital. Oh. Uh, uh, that it could somehow transport through the lines. And, yeah. And my friend Leslie sent me, she was a, a nurse in California out of 
out of the 11 or heart sent me the article about New York, the dad's not being allowed to be present in the room, or the partner's not being allowed to be present in the room. And talked to me on the phone. I was like, oh, I forget this. And then I went on um, the Highlands Ranch moms group. I don't know. I told, I told Gina, who had referred, who had sent us this article. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> this is this is life. Yes. This is COVID yes. life. You you might hear some of my life today. Also, that's <laughs> yes. why I keep muting myself. Something happened. The brother of the hockey stick. Who knows? Um. So I was just looking at. I wanted to take control of my book. Really, it was about me having control because I felt really out of control with COVID and in the hospital, people poking and prodding at me, checking me multiple times. Like my second birth was better because I had a doula and I had more say, but I still had to birth the position that they told me to birth. And I, so with Gina, we helped me deliver and, or helped us deliver. And it was amazing. I actually chose not to deliver in the tub, but I liked that I had a choice. Mm -hmm. you know, at one point, I was like, I want an epidural. And my husband's like, all right, we have to go to the hospital. I was like, I don't want to sit in the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I never understood the, the concept that people were like, oh, you forget the pain. I was like, oh, I always remember the pain. But with this one, I'm like, this was the best birth I had. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And like, I felt really powerful and I could just... You know, my mom had the kids in the basement in the tent, and they got to come up and see Cora after um, after I was, you know, situated. So it was a wonderful experience, and I wish that yeah. I tried it earlier. <laughs> oh, so was Shonda? Was it first your idea? Were, were the words first to come out of your mouth? I think we should have a home birth. Was that your? I said that to Jay, yes. and he, I showed him the article that I read, and he didn't. Yeah. Read it. I was like, are you nuts? Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> I think he thought that it was like just him and me with no help. And I was like, oh, no, just come on. <laughs> There's people that do that. So Jay, what were you thinking? What was going through your mind at that moment? Uh, yeah, at that moment I was thinking, I, I, I haven't, I don't know that I've told Sean this, but I had read an article about a woman who was kind of like an anti-vaxxer and had chosen based on ridiculous things she read online to wait until like 42 weeks and then attempt a, a home birth alone and it ended really really poorly no you did her. not tell me that <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, 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 I know what story you're talking yeah. about i actually think she was way past 42 weeks i think she was like yeah 43 or 44 weeks or mm -hmm. something i think that's true story and devastating yeah um, and so, like, that's in my mind. And we're talking about home birth, and I'm like, ah, I don't know. You threw the phone. I, yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> and so I read the article, and then I was like, okay. Wait. So yeah. we have midwives on, on hand. We'll have a team there. And then when I met with you guys, and, you know, you talked through our kind of contingency plans and what we would do and, and when you guys would make decisions. And, and we knew that there was a UC, a hospital just six minutes away for us, um, mm -hmm. which our original birth plan was to drive 40 minutes anyway. Oh, which, yeah. <laughs> before it. Yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> a massive turnabout that was It was great. Like waking you up, like, honey, I think I'm in labor. And then you guys came and then she was born. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was really straightforward. Yeah. So you remain our most late to care clients, I would say, and probably will be the most late to care because it wasn't even a week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Four days, wasn't it? Um, I think it was four days. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think I think we talked on a Monday by phone. Oh yeah. I think between we did when a, we met in person. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was like mm. three days or it was Thursday. Maybe. To, Thursday, Thursday to Sunday. Oh, so not even. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So how did, um, like maybe what's something that was surprising to you or something that didn't, so there were midwives there. We do, yeah. we do things. <laughs> so that was a surprise, <laughs> but also what's something about home birth that you maybe had a preconceived idea about that turned out not to be true or not to be really just come, come out in reality. I mean, I think my sister has had two home births 
And I think maybe I just didn't understand her story. Mm-hmm. Um, like she talked about a pool in the living room and she's got a lot of kids. And I was just like, yeah, oh, you crazy lady. Like, <laughs> 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 say that word. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it, uh, yeah, I, I think I just didn't understand her story. Yeah. The details of her story. And, um, I kind of joked with my sister of like how she's kind of a trendsetter and I'm the last to try things like leggings are in style and like I start wearing them when they're out of style. <laughs> right. <But laughs> home birth, like people are going to start doing it. <laughs> <laughs> right. <Yep. laughs> but, um, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I didn't fully understand it. And I just, I think I was really scared of the potential fatality rate. And so you mm-hmm. can get at answering all of our questions like for safety wise, because I, never like I want my birth experience but at the end of the day I want my baby to be healthy of course sure of course really reasserted us that you know you knew how to get a cord around the neck if that happened and like you were checking even if I wasn't aware you were monitoring so like and I really trusted you guys or trust you guys so um, that's awesome yeah good yeah I think given that we only had like four days yeah you guys did a fantastic job. It was super fast relationship building. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that I, I don't know, Nedra, if you had such a busy practice in Phoenix, but I think that in some of my experiences, so first I did a lot of my um, primary under supervision births when I was a student out of country and I didn't ever meet the people and I didn't speak the same language as them and yeah. I still felt really capable of serving them. So I think that that maybe informs my ability to kind of just pick something up. And then also I've been a backup midwife a lot, like probably for 20 right. births where right. I, I never met the people. <laughs> so I feel like it's just one of those things. It's a human experience and we can just jump in. Um, yeah. You've done a lot of last true. minute stuff like that, Nedra? Yeah. We had a couple of super late transfers like this. Um, and then of course, um, all of the backing people up and all of that, it's really good training. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That happened more in my early days for sure. Like just, yeah. And I mean, even in only our, um, limited time knowing each other, you guys educated me. I feel like more than my physicians have mm-hmm. in the past on how to birth my baby. Mm-hmm. Before it's just like, Oh, that's great. Right. Like the perineum, is that how you say it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Telling me to go slow so I don't hurt myself. I didn't know that for my last one. And I rushed him out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Blast the baby out. <laughs> Slow, slow. They told her to stop in the middle of it. It's yeah. like at that point she's too late. She's but like knowing right. knowing that before I even go into the birth and like knowing it was it was very powerful. So good. good. So as so I think one of the reasons I thought this would be a good interview to do is because I feel like we've been almost negative. Like even the blog post that you're talking about was almost like, well, you might consider home birth, but this is not for everyone. Like I feel like we've really that's the point that we've been driving home. And when I got interviewed on um the news the other night, it was like that's the point that she picked up was like this isn't for everyone. Yeah. And it's true. Yes. But it is for a lot of people. It is a great option for a lot of people. And so, yeah. you know, you came in with a healthy pregnancy and um, you had lab work and, you yeah. know, yeah. you had you had information ready. And so um, we were able to kind of pick up and get going. But but well, not I, everybody might be in that position. Yeah. I right. think it's huge that you ask the questions, you make sure it's a good candidate because you don't want to you want to avoid the hospital if you can, if that's your goal, to just be where you are. Right. So, yeah. Right. You guys are being very responsible. Right. Well, we do. We value keeping everybody safe. Oh, that was right. Exactly. Good. I was making noise on my computer. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. It's all different than our normal podcast. Yes. Group, so. So I think um, that you were at, you were asking us about that. Am I? Did I misunderstand that? No. I mean, I think I think I was just saying. I just wanted to make sure that people could hear your story because I feel like we've been a little bit, you know, well, yeah. maybe, maybe you could consider, you know. Yeah. yeah. When, the, when the truth is it's a great option for a whole lot of people. Right. So, well, yeah. I thought that was a positive to your article because it wasn't you just marketing yourself. Right. I was and, like, oh, she's <laughs> her, her like thing and like letting me make my choice. Right. <laughs> we wouldn't want to do that. We wouldn't want to exploit anybody's fear or right totally you know, yeah totally 
So, um, so as it turned out, so now baby Cora is, gosh, what is she? Two and a half weeks now? Maybe three already. Almost three. Maybe three on Sunday. Three on Sunday. Yeah. Wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so here in Colorado, we shut down pretty tight. I think we've had really good isolation practices and the, I do think that we were able to keep the curve flatter mm -hmm. and it didn't turn out to be a big crisis mm -hmm. um, in the hospitals. I mean, it's definitely the resources are being stretched thin, but, but it's not, um, you know, they're not at capacity or people can still get in. They are still allowed one support person. Um, so it had, it wasn't the worst case scenario. Sure. So knowing that now, how do you feel about your decision to choose a home birth? Knowing that it wasn't the worst case scenario. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we would do this again. <laughs> oh good. We would do this again. Yeah. Awesome. I think, um, it took us like a day to mull it over because financially it's an investment and you yeah. know, health, like health insurance covering. I wish health insurance covered it. Yeah. But, um, I, mean, I think some do, but ours didn't. Ours didn't. Right. It, it was too good. late in the game to even really like go through that whole process. But yeah, I would absolutely, like I said, I wish I had done this before. I mean, we were in, our Korea, in Korea for our last one, so I don't really think it was an option for us there, maybe. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, like, yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> if we were to have more children, we would choose you guys. Awesome. Oh, great. That's great. That's nice. <laughs> but we're not having any more children. So. <laughs> oh. But that's not going to happen. <laughs> well, one of my fears is that people that come in late might not, they don't get the whole midwifery experience. So like you said, even in this short amount of time that we did more education, we actually do a lot more, a yeah. lot more. Like we think about it, like 12 visits with us over the course of a pregnancy. Mm -hmm. um, and then your, your postpartum care has been impacted too, because we're not yeah. seeing, we're not doing as many home visits and stuff like that. Um, so we actually haven't provided the really highest standard of care that we normally provide. So I'm worried that sometimes people might feel that some people might feel like it wasn't that great. <laughs> Because <laughs> they're not getting the whole package. Uh, I, mean, I haven't had it before, so I right. They're all I right. Off of, and I think you know, like I've had questions probably weekly, maybe more than that. And I text you or call you, and you always get back to me right away. I'm able to contact yeah. my primary care physician too, like if I have to take an antibiotic for something. You know, right. like right. I feel like I'm not. I didn't just give birth and then I'm isolated. Cora and I are both still your patients, and mm -hmm. um, even though I can't, you know, go to your office and see you, or by, or you come to our house, we can still support you. Yeah. yeah, right. Good, good. I'm good. glad you feel that way. That's one of my biggest fears yeah. about the late transfers is that people are going to be like, "What's the? What's so special?" You know? Yeah, it's like oh. abbreviated. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the birth, and then like. As long as you're there for the big day, I think. Actually, <laughs> some people think <laughs> that two in the morning. Like yes. some of the calls have been, they don't understand that we provide prenatal and postpartum care. Yeah. And they think that that's what we do, like normally that that we just show up at your house when you're in labor. Which would yeah. not be very safe. That would not yeah. be safe for anyone. <laughs> All the newborn screeners and oh yeah, the jaundice one that my the pediatrician wanted. You guys did it just because you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're still we're still paying attention for sure. Um, so, what advice would you give somebody who's kind of thinking about this? Um, Explore it. I mean, reach out, contact you guys, or if they're not local, then you know, contact them their local midwives mm -hmm. uh, because it's worth exploring. It never hurts to ask. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, yeah, if you're having a normal pregnancy, this is probably a, a, a very viable option for you. Especially um, if you want, if you're open to having no drugs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like if you're like, I am getting that epidural, it's not for you. Right. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> right. But like, let me talk about my options. And then on, I did a, a hypnosis thing on um, like the hypnotherapy or something app mm -hmm, for birth. Mm -hmm. I listened to it a lot before I gave birth. During labor, it didn't really help, but it was nice to just, for me, I liked ha having the control of my own body. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like people sticking the IV in my, you know, like in multiple sticks and multiple checks. I mean, Jenny, you checked me twice, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And I loved her like, I was like, I think I want to push. Like, then push. 
Mm-hmm. You want this? Do it. Mm-hmm. Where do you want to do it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to do it, but I want my body. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, I like being in control. So mm-hmm. it's like having that option. Then. Yeah, know. you've said control a couple times. You mentioned it early on that you wanted to control. No, I think it's. I think that's an important thing to identify because yeah. you wanted to control the situation. You didn't want to have... I mean, there's still unknowns. We are in a pandemic, so we're certainly making some adaptations, but you wanted to kind of have a plan and you didn't feel, it sounds like you didn't feel like you could have had the plan that you wanted to have. Well, maybe because we didn't have midwives in the hospital Mm -hmm. and maybe it would have been similar. Mm -hmm. But the other thing was like, we don't have family in Colorado. My mom luckily flew out right before Colorado shut it down and she's been quarantined with us, but we had friends that were going to watch our other kids. So it was mm-hmm. kind of like, how do we, how do we navigate this? And yes. We're here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I think that's, I think that's great. I think that if that's something that gives you a sense of having some ownership, I think you have a lot more ownership of a home birth than you do yeah, somewhere else. For sure. Even a birth center. Yeah. So, Yeah. yeah. No, it was wonderful. Thank you. Good. I'm so glad. And the problem with having a midwife and having midwifery care is that you're stuck with us now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we don't go anywhere. You have to stay in touch. And um, in the in the pre-pandemic world, we have like annual get-togethers and stuff. So oh, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. So hopefully you'll be able to come to some of that. So yeah, Yay. we were gonna have. weren't we gonna have fun in? When was it? September? It was, no, it was going to be June, which is crazy. Oh, it's going to be we June. Planned. Can that's you believe not, we planned anything for June, which is so that's full? That's not happening. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, June. We're we're one over. We're one over our happy place. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's going to be it's going to be a crazy month. So. Yeah. Hopefully we so we'll have to see. see. Yes, yeah, so we'll have to see where it fits in with when all the restrictions get lifted and everything. Yeah. yeah. And hopefully they'll all be kind of settled down with still good weather to do it at a park. Because the last time we tried to do something at the office, it was a madhouse. So mm-hmm. we don't want to do that again. Mm-hmm. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it was craziness. So. Oh, oh of course. Say hi. hi. Oh. She went from she went from totally out to milk drunk to <laughs> oh sweet she's bubbling her own head like oh so cute but, but she's just <laughs> well it was awesome working with you guys like I said you're you're not done oh Nedra do you have any questions that I didn't ask I'm sorry no no I think that was good I was just noticing Gina that you and I are wearing the same outfit again I don't know how that happened <laughs> where we're not we haven't seen each other in weeks but okay. <laughs> Because we're soul sisters, <laughs> we're connected on a fashion level. Yeah. So yeah, and we're both in our bedrooms, which is also quite yes, interesting. yes. <laughs> so all right, you guys. Well, thanks so much for sharing your time with us, and um, it's been great to get to know you and to catch Cora and. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, to add you to the Metro Midwifery group. Yes, it was really yeah. nice to have you guys come into our lives. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much. I'm going to stop recording and so we'll say goodbye. Don't forget to follow us on social at Metro Midwifery or www.modmidwives.com or your favorite Apple, Google, Spotify player. We're available. So, bye everybody. Bye. Thank you.